And you can think about it like tree roots, that the, the factual part of our mind is like the roots in the ground, and then we can rise up out of it like that. That may be a little bit confusing what he's talking about. We'll try to break it down here with a few examples. Um, you know, the, the senses can gather facts, we can look at things and how they interact, and from that we can form concepts, which we then can understand things better by. For example, metaphors. A metaphor is a great way to understand something. You're looking at a smaller model of it to understand a larger concept. That is correspondences that we talk about all the time on this show. You're looking at physical things to have spiritual things, uh, to, to start to understand the mystery of spiritual things. And this was a, and this is a process that, that happens through the senses into us. You know, we to be able to form concepts, you first have to read words or hear words being spoken to you. You know, that is how we learn. However, not everybody learns through sight and hearing. What if you didn't have either? There's a very famous person who didn't, her name is Helen Keller. She, for what it's worth, was an avid Swedenborgian. She wrote this biography about how um, Swedenborg was the coolest thing in the world. So uh, I thought it's fitting to tell a little bit of her story. Here you see first her learning these concepts. Uh, this, is a, this is a clip from a documentary that the Swedenborg Foundation actually made, where she, this is the part where she's learning about words and thoughts, even though she couldn't learn about them through sight and hearing. This is about the moment when she first got that connection from her, uh, her sense of touch into her sense of, of thought. Week after week, the gifted and patient Annie Sullivan put objects in Helen's hands and spelled their names into her palm, despite no visible signs of success. Helen appeared unable to make any mental connection between the two actions. It is almost as if the absence of language had caused an inability to code events or order them or remember them subsequently. The difficulties facing someone who is deaf and blind, of course, are enormous. Finally, after more than a month of working with her unruly student, Annie succeeded in reaching Helen's mind. As the family pump gushed forth water onto Helen's hand, Annie simultaneously spelled into it W-A-T-E-R and facilitated a connection in Helen's consciousness between object and sign. I stood still, my whole body's attention fixed on the motions of her fingers as the cool stream flowed over my hand. All at once, there was a strange stir within me, a misty consciousness, a sense of something forgotten, a thrill of returning thought, and somehow the mystery of language was revealed to me. Everything had a name, and each name gave birth to a new thought. After this revelation of words and meanings, she learned th to fingerspell 30 words that first day, and became ravenous to learn the name of everything around her, including Annie, who became the generic name Teacher. Delicious sensations rippled through me, and sweet, strange things that were locked up in my heart began to sing. A ray of light from another soul touched the darkness of my mind, and I awoke to the joy and beauty of life. And here, we're going to see this progression with her from, first of all, being able to develop these outer senses. Once that sense of touch kicked in in a way that she could make meaning out of those symbols, this whole world opened up for her in terms of knowledge. In this next clip, we're going to see how it was after she gained that knowledge that she started to get this insight into these higher spiritual things through the things she had learned with her sense of, t sense of touch. So here's part two. Helen had an experience when she was around 12 years old. She was sitting in her library at home, quietly reading a history book, and suddenly she had what she perceived to be an out-of-body experience. She felt as though her soul had been in Athens. In that moment, she realized that in the sense of touch, she had found an eye, and that her soul was independent of time and place. The bright, amazing realization seemed to catch my mind and set it ablaze. Space was nothing to spirit. I perceived the realness of my soul and its sheer independence of all conditions of place and body. It was clear to me that it was because I was a spirit that I had so vividly seen and felt a place thousands of miles away. 
In that new consciousness shone the presence of God, himself a spirit everywhere at once, the creator dwelling in all the universe simultaneously. I never again doubted that there is a spiritual body within my own imperfect one, and within a few dark years, the eyes within my eyes would open to a world infinitely more wonderful, complete, and satisfying than this. I let myself go and tried to puzzle out the long words and weighty thoughts of the Swedish seer. So there she is using her inner senses and she got it. Initially through these outer senses, she had to make that progression. Mm -hmm.